Today we're going to cover surface area. The essential question is when and how would knowing surface area be useful? The first thing that we're going to cover are prisms and these are the two formulas. So the reason you're given to is LSA stands for lateral surface area and all that means is you're going to find the area of all surfaces except for the bases. And then TSA is total surface area which means you're going to find the area of all surfaces. So lateral surface area you can think of it kind of like a, um, a can of you know, green beans or peas or whatever. They have labels that go all the way around the side, but they do not cover the top and the bottom. So that's lateral surface area because the top and the bottom of a cylinder are its bases. Total surface area is the entire thing. So like wrapping Christmas presents where every single surface is covered, that would be total surface area. Then within the formulas themselves, we have more letters that may or may not make sense to you. Um, big P just stands for the perimeter of the base and big B stands for the area of the base. And the very last letter that you have to deal with with these two formulas is H, which is the height of the whole prism itself, not of the base, but of the entire prism. And I'm going to show you guys two example problems. The only difference is this time I'm going to show you how I draw them um, so that it might help you be able to draw them in your notes. So the first one we're going to draw is a rectangular prism. The easiest way to draw that is you're going to draw two squares or as close to squares as you can, um, although they could be rectangles. In this case, they're actually going to be rectangles, but they don't have to be perfect. And you offset them a little like this, where they're kind of diagonal from each other. And then you just connect top right corner to top right corner, top left corner to top left corner, bottom right corner to bottom right corner, and bottom left corner to bottom left corner. Um, and now I'm going to label all of its pieces. And then we're going to do a triangular prism and you basically do it the same way. You draw two triangles that are offset. They should actually match, mine don't, but you know, I do the best I can. And then you connect the top to the top, bottom right to bottom right, and then bottom left to bottom left and then let's fill in those dimensions. Um, don't forget that triangles themselves, so remember the base of this is a triangle, and to find the area of it, you're gonna need the height of that triangle. So in this case, it will be three centimeters. And then um, the hypotenuse will be four centimeters. and then the base of the triangles will be two centimeters and the height of the prism will be 10 centimeters. Okay, so now we have to plug it into the formula. So for each of these, you have to understand which base, which piece of it is a base. So for this first one, your base is actually a rectangle and the rectangle looks like this. So this will help us find our big P and our big B. So our big P is the perimeter of the base. And since this is of my base and it's a rectangle, if this side is three, this one is also three. And if this side is two, this one's also two. So our perimeter is two plus three plus two plus three, which two and three is five and five and five is 10. So our perimeter is 10 inches. We also need to find the area of our base, which is big B. And for a rectangle, that's the base times the height. So you just multiply the two together. So two times three, which means the area of our base is six inches. And since it's area, it would be squared. And then lastly, you have a little H, which is of the prism, not of the rectangle. It is the height of the prism. So um, on this one, my bases are here. And that means that our height will be what it's laying down on. So a height of our prism is 12 inches. So now we just plug in numbers and solve. Our LSA is big P, which for us it's 10, times the height of our prism, which is 12. And 10 times 12 is 120 inches, and since it's area, it's squared. 
And remember that um, they're squared because area is two-dimensional, and so your dimensions have to be squared. Then we have to find the total surface area. Now, if you look at this formula, you see how both of these are the exact same? So what we really do is we take the lateral surface area and we add um, two times the area of the base. So we're gonna take our lateral surface area, which is 120, and add two times the area of my base, which is six. So we're gonna have 120 plus two times six is 12, and 120 plus 12 is 132 inches squared. And we're done. So now let's look at the triangular prism. Its base is a triangle. That's why this is called a rectangular prism and this is called a triangular prism because that's what the bases are. So it's a triangle that looks like this. So in order to find the perimeter, you just add up all of its sides together. So four plus four plus two, which would also be 10. And in this case, they're centimeters. The area of a base of a triangle is half of its base times its height. So half and the base of a triangle is at the bottom two times the height of that triangle, which in this case is three. Um, half of two is one, and one times three is three centimeters squared is the area of the base. And then lastly, we have to get the height of the prism itself, which we go back to the big picture. And since this is a base and this is a base, that means that 10 centimeters is the height of our prism. And now we just plug in numbers and solve. So the lateral surface area is big P, which is 10, times the height, which is also 10. So our lateral surface area would be 100 centimeters squared. Total surface area, you take the lateral surface area and you add two times the area of the base, which would be 100 plus two times three is six, so 106 centimeters squared. And we are done with this problem. Next, we're going to cover um, pyramids. So here are our formulas for both the lateral and total surface area of a pyramid. Um, and it has a big P and it has a big B, but it also has this cursive L. And all that cursive L means is slant height. And a lot of people confuse slant height and height of a pyramid. So I'm gonna give you two visuals. Um, the regular height of a pyramid is as if you were doing Mission Impossible and you were dangling through the very, very top of the pyramid all the way down to the bottom of the pyramid. That line that you would make from the very, very top all the way through the middle of the pyramid down to the bottom would be the actual height. The slant height would be if you went to the top of the pyramid and you slid down its side, the line that your booty would make would be the slant height. And just for these purposes, slant height is used for surface area on pyramids, and then height is used for volume on pyramids. And now I'm gonna attempt to try to help you to draw some pyramids, but I'm not that great at it myself either, so we'll give it a try. So the, for the base of the pyramid, you wanna draw a rhombus, but almost more like a diamond, but just offset a little bit. So it'll look like this. And then normally on a diamond, you would have it stop here. So we're gonna go over just a little bit and draw two parallel lines, then connect those parallel lines. And then you kind of find the middle of the distance between the two and your height will actually end up right there. Um, so the top of your pyramid will be up here. And then you just connect the top with all four corners. And again, just do the best you can. Pyramids are exceedingly hard to draw. They are hard for me to draw as well. Um, so I understand I don't have high, high expectations for y'all's drawings. Um, then the height of the pyramid would be straight down to the bottom. And then the slant height of the pyramid is a line your booty would make if you slid down the side of this pyramid. And it always, um, both the height and the slant height, the height will touch the bottom at a 90 degree angle, the slant height will touch the side at a 90 degree angle. And then here are all of its dimensions. Now I'm gonna to attempt to teach you how to draw a triangular pyramid, which is actually harder to do. Um, it is easier to do with the right triangle, but you kinda of gotta offset it a little bit. 
Um, so this is how I would draw it. I would draw this part of my right triangle, um, then this piece of it, and then you would connect the two to make your right triangle. And then right in the middle of that right triangle would be where your height would go. So right above that would be the top of your pyramid. And then you connect all those sides together. Um, dangling down through the top would be the height. And then sliding down this side would be your slant height. And here are all those dimensions. All right, so now we're going to figure out all the pieces and we're gonna do the um, square pyramid first. So in this case, our base, since it's called a square pyramid, is a square that looks like this. So our big P, which is the perimeter of the square, is 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 40 feet. And perimeter is just a line around the outside, and a line is one dimensional, so it's just feet. Um, the big B is the area of the base, and um, to find the area of a square, you do base times height, which is 10 times 10, which means the area of our base is 100 feet, and since it's area, it's squared. Um, then we also need to find our slant height, and that is the slant height of the pyramid not of a square, because a square doesn't have a slant height. And the slant height of the pyramid, remember, is the line your booty would make if you slid down the so slide, the side, like a slide, which would be um, 13 feet for this one. And since it's just a line, it is just feet. And then we just plug in our formulas. So the lateral surface area is half of your big P, so 40 times your slant height, which is 13. And if you get out a calculator, I can show you how to do it on there. Um, for a half, it's just easier to do 0.5, and then times 40, and then times 13. Just put it all in there. And 260 feet squared is our lateral surface area. For your total surface area, so again, if you look, both of these are the same. So we're just going to take our lateral surface area and add it to our base, our area of our base. So 260 plus the area of our base, which is 100. So our total surface area is 360 feet squared. And now we need to look at the triangular pyramid. And the base is, like I said, a triangle. And it looks like this. And I made a mistake. I'd originally written this side as 18, and it's only 8, so my bad. Um, the big P, the perimeter of your triangle, is 6 plus 6 plus 8.5, which means the perimeter of our base is 20 and a half yards. We got big B, which is half the base times the height of the triangle, so half my base is 6, and then my height is also 6 because when it's a right triangle, um, your two legs are your base and height. So half of six is three, and three times six is 18 yards squared. And then the last thing we need is our slant height of the pyramid. So the line your booty would make if you slid down the side, which would be five yards. Now we just plug it into formulas. So this is what your LSA would look like. So it's a half times 20 and a half times five. And when you put it all in your calculator, your lateral surface area is 51 and a quarter yards squared. Um, total surface area, add your lateral surface area to the area of your base. So we just take our original and add it to uh, the area of our base, which is 18, which gives us 69 and a quarter yards squared. Um, next, we're going to look at cylinders and cones. All of these formulas, by the way, I am getting off of the star geometry um, formula chart because there did used to be a star test for geometry, but there isn't one anymore. Um, so this is what the formulas they give you for a cylinder. Now, if you look at this, remember 2 pi r is how we find the circumference, which for a circle is the perimeter. So our lateral surface area is the same thing, time that, uh, is the same thing as the perimeter times the height 
which is the exact same formula as a prism for the lateral surface area. And then our total surface area um, would be 2 times P plus, and then the area of a circle is pi R squared, or the area of the base. So it's the same, it's the exact same formulas as a prism. The only difference is they give you the circle parts of the formulas, but otherwise they're the same as a prism. And here is how you draw a cylinder. You draw two ovals, one on top of another, and then you just connect the outsides of the ovals with straight lines, not crooked ones if you can. And then here are the dimensions of our cylinder. So our radius is two and the height of our cylinder is six. So we will need um, the perimeter of the base because remember this is the same thing as the perimeter of the base times the height. And our perimeter is the same thing as the circumference of our circle. So our big P and C are the same for this. C which is the same thing as big P. Um, is 2 pi r, or 2 times pi times the radius, which is 2. Um, it is a whole lot easier on your brain if you leave things in terms of pi, meaning you carry it like a variable. So in this case, you would just do 2 times 2, which is 4 pi, is our circumference, and it's in inches. And then we're looking at the area of our base, which is um, pi r squared. So pi and our radius is two squared. So if you leave this one in terms of pi, you're just squaring two and two squared is four pi inches squared. And then lastly, you will need the height of your cylinder. So the height of my cylinder is six inches. And now we can just plug things in. The lateral surface area is, remember, 2 pi r is my circumference. So this part is really my big P. Um, so it would be 4 pi and then times the height, which in this case is 6. And then if you leave it in terms of pi, 6 times 4 is 24 pi. Um, so that would be our exact value, would be 24 pi, and then if you need um, the estimated value, which if you're in fourth and fifth period, you have to give me both. If you're in any other class, you pick which one you want to do. It's your choice. Um, so 24 pi would be 24 pi, which is 75.3, well the nine rounds up, so 75.4 inches squared. And then your total surface area is just your lateral surface area, which is your 2 pi r h, so um, 24 pi, plus 2 times the area of your base, so 2 times 4 pi. So 24 pi plus 2 times 4 is 8 pi and 24 pi plus 8 pi is 32 pi. Sorry. So 32 pi and then the estimated value of that is 100.53 inches squared. And then we'll do cones on the back.